confirm this recording right so uh, we'll be looping this back on our youtube channel the benefit of coming to these sessions is that you get the lovely q a and we get to deep dive on this um so welcome everybody um if you can do keep your videos on particularly when we do the q a stuff because it helps me to really get a feel for the group and it makes us feel like we're a real um uh, in-person event which is all good um and also if the chat if you can ask questions in the chat um and help um ideally not long intros because the long intros um do clog up that chat Okay, so step one today, part one, we're going to be doing a live demo on how you create a Facebook lead ad. And I'm going to be going from start to finish um, all the way through for you. Um, and then second, we were taking questions about marketing. Um, this is very much part of step six in terms of our nine step million dollar sprint process, um, the link to which I'll put onto the website. Um, but the point here is that once you know who you're going to target and actually what you're going to be selling to them, then you can start to crank up the volume through paid ads. Um, and that's really, really exciting. So that's what we're going to be doing in step six. Let me just put that thesis actually out into um, the uh, into the chat so you guys can check that out. Um, so here's the link to the thesis in here. It's just, it's just easily available on our website. So if anybody's watching this on the replay, you can go onto our website and see it here, thesis and process. This is step six. You've got to read through how you get to step six. Um, the point is, is once you know what you're selling and how you're selling it, then just crank the volume up and you get more people to sell to, right? Awesome. Okay. Let's just go back into this. And I just want to talk to you guys about some banana skins um, that Facebook ads can give you, right? So if you are thinking about running Facebook ads and you see this demo today, and you think, oh, that's actually easier than I thought. Just remember these banana spins. If you don't know who your target audience is, Facebook ads are very hard to succeed at, right? <laughs> if you don't know what you're selling to people, then Facebook ads also really difficult because you'll get leads for perhaps the wrong type of audience that isn't going to buy your flagship product, right? And when I say flagship products, I mean the product that is your lead product, your big high ticket product. Um, and if you don't have one of those and you're trying to promote something that's cheap or inexpensive, what tends to happen is you don't have the budget to be able to get the leads for the right type of people that buy your high ticket and therefore Facebook ads will fail. Um, step three, if you worry about your private friends because you're advertising on Facebook, it isn't about that and it's not your profile that's actually advertising. It's about your page that's advertising. So don't worry about your friends on Facebook seeing you advertising. They won't even see it if you don't want them to do, right? Um, some people worry about that. Step four, or sorry, banana skin four, is overthinking your content um, when you're doing this. The best thing to do is to give lots and lots of test variants and let the algorithm on Facebook be able to dictate what content works. Don't overthink about it. Actually just get them working and then they'll start to um, tell you what's working. Um, and you'll get comments on your posts that you put out on Facebook ads. Um, and you might also um, you know, have to respond to people DMs. Don't overthink about it, just go for it, right? Um, five is directly selling. If you think you can actually sell your product directly using Facebook ads, um, it tends to not be the case. It's a lead generation. Hence, I'm going to show you the best performing ad that we see, which is a lead ad. So it's a lead generation activity. Don't try and sell something straight off the bat. Don't try and flog your thousand pound course straight through ads. It tends to fall over 99% of the time, right? And the only time it doesn't fall over is if you've done a heck of a lot of credibility with the people that are buying. And so it's like a retargeting ad, et cetera, which usually means that you would have had to have done something beforehand. So try and get the leads first, and then you lead more up the leads in your sales process. To that end, if you're not tracking banana skin number six, if you're not tracking how your leads get into sales, then you can get 100 leads on Facebook, but actually are any of them going to be a client? And so if none of them are going to be a client, then there's what's, what's the point in actually doing it if you don't know, right? Because if you don't measure anything, then you don't know success or not success, right? And the final thing to talk about is um, lifetime value. So not knowing what your lifetime value is of a client, LTV, and without knowing that, then you can't actually um, make an assessment on if your ads are working. So by, by the thought on that is if you're, um, say, spending £100 on ads and you're getting, say, 10 leads, so 10 quid a lead, what, what actually do you need to be able to make a sale? So maybe you need 10 leads, you know, maybe you need 
five leads to make a sale. So it's 50 quid to make a sale. Well, if you're selling something for 50 quid, then um, that's not going to be a good ad. But if your lifetime value of the client is actually 50 quid a month for two years, then that's a good cost per acquisition. And so by knowing the lifetime value of your client empowers you to be able to spend more on Facebook ads, right? So they're the banana skins to watch out for. Cool. So what's the system we're going to talk to you about? So I, I mentioned when I did the invite about the um, the Facebook iOS updates, and actually Google's got in on this action as well, which is surprising because Google relies on ads as well. But um, it's Apple, basically, that did this update. Um, and what, what it meant is that in the, in the good old days, and there's always good old days, oh, I've got my gold pen out here. Um, let's get my 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 white pen right in the good old days you go here and say right these are the target market that i want to go after right we want to go find ceos of you know accountancy firms on facebook and we want to push them into our website landing page and our website landing page would be like download our ebook here or something along like this so we are ebook and they go download the ebook and on that uh, once they do it sends them to a thank you page and on that thank you page we would then give them the ebook right and so that's where they would get the ebook. And Facebook then allowed you to put this lovely bit of um, code, which is called a pixel. And so we put the pixel on our website and we put the pixel on our thank you page, which meant that we could run an ad that say put 100 people through here. And we would know that if 100 people click from this Facebook ad into our landing page, then maybe 10 people would get to the thank you page. And therefore, the conversion on this ad was 10%, right? And so that would then feed back to Facebook. But that pixel would also say, well, it is these 10 type of people. And Facebook would do an assessment on those 10 types of people and say, well, actually, they are all people that are accountants based in the southeast of England, not the northeast of England. And therefore, I'm going to then serve more people here that are accountants based in the southeast of England, right? And so hence why that campaign was enriched by having a conversion ad so more and more and more people would be optimized. So you would then get, instead of getting 10, you might get 15% conversion rate because you're getting the right type of people through it, right? So beautiful, right? That's, that's, that's a wonderful thing about data. Data wins when you're talking about ads. But iOS were like, well, hang on, you're using, this is Apple, you're using this, um, our, our client's phones, and you're putting cookies and pics, basically pixels as a cookie, right? Onto our client's phones and you're tracking them onto different websites. And you're actually getting the data Facebook that makes them um, go onto this page and this page and you're collecting that data and you're able to use that data to be able to make advertisers to be able to spend more. And so therefore they'll put more ads at these type of people. But nobody asks these type of people if they want more ads. And so therefore it's a data you know, privacy issue. And so iOS went, well, sorry, mate, we're just going to put like this lovely little blank thing in here and go break all of that because we're going to put all of our users automatically onto privacy mode. And so therefore you can't do this pixel stuff because they haven't given you permission to use their data for advertising. And Facebook and Google are like, but we all, that's how we make money. What are you doing? Like, come on, mate. Like, I thought we were friends, Apple. Um, and of course, they're all like, no, we're not friends. Um, and uh, you can't do that. So <laughs> because, uh, yeah, Apple don't make any money off ads, right? And Apple make money off software. And so therefore, they made their software privacy. Um, so the issue came, right? So this is the issue. So what do we do? Well, actually, Facebook has now started reward advertisers by getting better cost per click by doing a lead ad. Now, a lead ad is that you can go get these lovely people over here. You can push them onto a uh, into a, an ad that has a form embedded in the ad, right? The form is actually embedded in the ad. So I'm not moving people off the website, off Facebook. I'm keeping them within the walled garden of Facebook. And so therefore Facebook can tell them exactly what it is that um, you know they can see all that data. They can see who actually clicks on it, who downloads that form because it's all within Facebook and Facebook doesn't need the privacy mode to be on and off because it can see it, right? So hence why we can still do and get that data and get that information back to the algorithm and get more leads because of it. Get it? This, the beauty of it, and I'm going to show you, is that you can also then, after the lead is created and these people's details, you've got the lead, 
you can then still redirect them to the website to give them the ebook. So you can still achieve exactly what I've just showed you, but using the lead ad, it keeps them within the wall garden of Facebook, which enriches the algorithm, which gives you a better cost per lead, better conversion rate, better, better, better. Right. No more scribbles. Let's get into this because I've got to build out an ad. So hence why that there's a business case for you to think about lead ads as opposed to traffic um, or um, conversion ads, right? Okay, so this is Ads Manager. We're just loading into here. Now, if your Ads Manager does not look like this, it means you're probably using Ad Center. That's kind of the kindergarten of ads and you want to make sure that you get into here. If it looks all bubbly and lovely and kind of as if Apple built it, that's Ad Center. That doesn't give you as much um, information as ads, um, as an ad account should do. If you don't know um, how to get there, you just simply type in Facebook um, ads manager like this. I don't know why I'm in capitals. Um, and it will just go down to here. So ads management Facebook, and you'll get into a page like this and you just press this button here, go to ads manager, and it will take you to that. It's, I don't know why that it's like two different logins or why they've done it. I know why they did it to make the nicer, easier one is because they want you to start spending. But ultimately, this is how you get onto here, right? I'm not going to open two, so we'll go that way. So once you get onto here, you get this magic green button here, which says create. Even if you haven't got any previous ads, you just press create. This is when you're going to start to create an ad. Now, once we think about this, there's, there's different categories. There's awareness, there's consideration, there's conversion, right? So awareness is like brand awareness, reach to get as many people looking at stuff. Consideration is where they're actually going to be either clicking like a traffic ad that I just mentioned or looking for getting views in your video. Um, engagement might be like likes and comments, video views. Yeah, I mentioned video views. Lead generation, that's the one we're going to talk about today. Or you could get messages where people click and go into Messenger, right? Um, if you wanted conversion, you could do. That's the conversion ad that I just showed you where it loops back and does that data. Um, but again, that's sticky. You're not getting all that information now. Um, you can get store traffic if you're online shop, catalog sales, et cetera. So I would stick within this as expert businesses, which most of you are, right? So lead generation, you click on here and you simply press continue. And we don't need to worry about the name of the campaign yet because we'll do that in a second. And it's going to then create the campaign. So here we go. So new lead generation campaign. And I'm just going to say, you know, ebook. We're going to do an example of an ebook download. You could do everything from inviting people to events to downloading ebooks to, getting people to uh, join a five-day challenge, whatever you're doing, you just need to have a nice thing to convert, an info swap, a reason why someone would give information. You probably already have them on your website. Okay, so, um, sorry, excuse me. I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, I've been a rain in the sneeze. Uh, so um, when this, this first page, just trust it from me, all of this stuff is pretty irrelevant it's just kind of telling you that it's an auction telling you the objectives lead generation which you've already told it right so it's just the basic stuff the most important thing on this page or in fact the only really important thing on this page is just to think about your budget there's two ways to look at this you can do a daily budget of 10 pounds a day and then make the campaign um, last for 10 days or i like and a lot of clients like to feel a little bit more comfortable to go lifetime budget and actually set it up as 100 quid and, and then make the campaign last um, 10 days. Why are we doing this? Is because I want people to try, and even if you're an experienced ad, um, ad campaigner, you try just a hundred quid little punt. Go and have a punt for a hundred quid. Hundred quid here, hundred quid there. And you're trying this audience with this different you know, ebook or this audience with inviting them to this event or this audience inviting them to this five-day challenge and try the hundred quid. And then if it works, you'll know for every hundred pounds, I get say 10 leads. So that's 10 pounds a lead. So if I spent a thousand pounds, that would give me a hundred leads, right? And so you can easily do the numbers. Um, so let's do a lifetime budget for a hundred quid, have a test on it, right? Let's click next. Ba -da -ba. So this is now your ad set. So within an ad set, you kind of set the audience that you want to go and target. And then underneath that ad set, you can see here on the left-hand side, you can see that um, you've got the ads itself. Right, so you can have multiple ads within one ad set. The ad set helps you target the audience, so that's what we want to work on first, right? So, um, you want to work through here, and you first of all go, What's the lead method? Well, actually, we want 
um, to get instant forms. That's the lead getting people going to fill in the form. You can do like have a chat thing going in or get people with calls, but they don't work as well. Um, you then want to select your Facebook page. Now, the Facebook page that I always work off is, is a page that I set up as me because I think people, people buy from people, right? So I set up a page that was an, uh, basically a page that was Richard Woods, the entrepreneur, and so therefore I advertise there because my little icon is not a logo, it's my face. And so hence why it has a familiarity. Trust me, the click-through rate, the conversion is better. Just, yeah, you know, I run a lot of this. Sometimes you just got to go with what I say on that one. Um, but of course, test and measure, right? So Facebook page is what I want to set this campaign up for. Um, and if you haven't accepted Facebook lead ad terms, you, you'll have to just basically go on there and just tick a box and say, I accept. Um, but, you know, it's just pretty simple. Once you've done that, it's all good. Um, now, what we're going to do here is think about the schedule. So if we're going to say, right, on the 16th, we're going to run this campaign um, and we're going to finish it on... Um, 10 days later. So what's that going to be? The 26th. So there you go. So we're going to run that campaign. It's a hundred pound lifetime budget and we're going to run it for 10 days, right? Wicked. Um, okay. And actually, you know, as you're doing this, I would just change the time just to go like, um, do this for like 10, you know, just, just so when you actually go live with it, it's going to just wait an hour and, and then it will go live. It will have to go into like a Facebook will go and, um, uh, accept it. There will be a little bit of manual scanning on your ads before they go live, so they don't instantly go live. Um, then you've got to do audience. Now, audience is interesting. So there's different ways of doing it. So there's like a way of doing like a demographic audience of saying, hey, I want to work with CEOs who are accountants, etc. Or you can do some clever stuff like upload your customer list to Facebook and then do a lookalike audience of that of that customer list. So let me just repeat that. You can upload your customer list to Facebook. And then once you've uploaded it with their email address, et cetera, Facebook finds all those people on Facebook. And then you say, hey, I want to do a lookalike audience of people that aren't my customers, but look like my customers. And because Facebook are data people, so they're pretty awesome at sorting out what they're, you know, of, of that data side, they will give you an amazing audience to go after. So you can do that. If you want to, if you're doing something different or maybe you don't have a massive customer list, you can just do a list that you've already got in your database of people that you suspect are good and do a lookalike of that as well. They don't have to be your customers. Um, if you've got none of that, then you can do a simple demographics campaign. So I'll show you the simple campaign, but I'll also show you how you can upload those audiences. Right. So first of all, um, location. Location is quite easy. This, this is the simple way of doing it. You could say, well, I want to go after people in the United Kingdom or... I could actually say, hey, I want to go after people that are in London, right? Um, like that. And you can go pick um, the city itself and it will get everybody in London. Um, you can then actually say, well, actually, I want to do a territory that's kind of like, you know, 57 kilometers around London. And then, oh, and then bang, you can see, let me, sorry, I'm just trying to scroll down. There you go. Um, you can see that you get a nice circular territory. And they're like, oh, actually, well, I, I kind of also like people in Bristol. Um, and then you can go, oh, you can spell it right as well. Um, Bristol. There you go. And then you can find Bristol in United Kingdom. And then you've got that. And now you can start to go, well, actually, if I go and increase the radius there and I go, you know, do you know what I mean? And you can start to actually plot uh, a kind of territory around those different locations. So that's how it works. You can also do a postcode, right? So if I go, um, G, U, I'll do my postcode. Um, you do G24 and then, then the art last bit, which is kind of nine, you can then start to see that it's got the entire postcode of where I live. So that's quite cool. You can see how it's not a circle anymore. It's a specific postcode. So if you are looking at the hyper-targeting, you can go around those postcodes, right? Um, cool. So we can stick those locations in. There's lots of different things you can do there. Um, you can then talk about age. Um, so I kind of, you know, normally kind of hit around the, kind of, I don't know, 30s to, to I, I, I go 65 plus is like everybody else. So I normally go up to like 64 or six, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, so, so around there or whatever, you know, you just kind of make a hypoth hypothetical feeling about who your audience is. Um, then you want to think about detail targeting. So detail targeting is where it gets important. This is where you think about, well, if I want them to be a business owner and also in a business, small business and also be an accountancy, that's a that's a specific way of doing it. Um, and to help you guys, by the way, um, I've got um, 
a training on here. This is a page that has got a demo that's a similar building this ad. And on here, there's some links to some workbooks that you might be interested on using. So I'm going to just stick that in the chat. This is worth just copying and pasting into a new browser. You can go back and have a look at it. Uh, so there you go. Um, so that's the that's the link there. In here, there's a nice workbook that you would just click on and download, um, and you go straight in and download this workbook. Um, Flora, if you're on this call, could we make sure that we link this up um, below um, the replay on the YouTube as well, this landing page and these workbooks, um, so people on the replay can see it. Um, so the, you can see here, this is the Who Do You Want to Work With workbook. And this is going to give you these kind of categories to think about. So if you want to spend some time really thinking about your audience, you can get this workbook and you can start to write down what your audience might be. And then from that, you know, things like industry sector, job roles, what media consume, you can take this completed workbook and then use this to educate how you're going to go after those ads. So if you want to do that, that will really help. Um, because when you go into detail targeting here, you'll see that if we're going to go after, let's say CEO, right? So you type in CEO and in a second, well, let's type in managing director, Hang on. managing director. Tour. Okay. Oh, crikey. It's saying no search. Come on, Facebook. Uh, let's go director. It, it does play up a little bit, particularly when I'm doing live demos. Right. Um, director, um, project management, conducting, let's say board of directors. Interesting. That's interesting. So I want to then go and use this suggestions button. There you go. Perfect. Don't, I, God knows why it wouldn't give me managing director to start off with. So the point is, you type in director stuff. When you type in managing director, I'm sure it will give you the right thing. I maybe I just spelt it wrong. And then you start to see these are all the job roles that facebook sees as being people that are directors right so you just simply would go through and keep on clicking these um when they're job titles so we want to make sure that we're just clicking job titles right and so if you've got the job titles in there now if you start to put something in there that's actually like a um they're interested in small business so i think what i had in here and i don't know why yeah look interests so I don't want people who are interested in board of directors. I want people who are in the board of directors. So I'm going to take that out. So I've just got here, demographics work, job titles, and it's all their board of directors. You can keep on going through and you can keep on clicking these. But if you went down and actually started to click on something um, that was an interest, like entrepreneurship, now a student at college could be interested in entrepreneurship. So if you put entrepreneurship within the job titles piece by mistake, it means that now you've just completely blown the term of demographics because it's people who are directors and they could also be, you know, also they could be anybody that's interested in entrepreneurship. So basically everybody, right, who, who's in business. So what you've got to do now is we've got to narrow the audience. They've got to be management directors. And if we want to narrow audience, they've got to click this button here, magic button, that one, which then says, and also must match, which means that they've got to be directors and Let's say we want to go after accountants. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so we go accountants, maybe just with an S. Perfect. So let's go. Um, don't want to go job. Uh, let's go. National. Uh, yeah, so let's say um, charter certified accountants, association charter associated accountants, right? So once you found one that kind of is in around what you're trying to get to then you put this suggestions piece in again and now it's going to give you all of the stuff right that's to do with accountancy right so chartered accountant right um financial accountants they don't have to be all of these things they just have to be one of these things so if they are a ceo and also they're interested in accounting or they're a chartered accountant financial accountant you can see how now i've got these really specific and in the right hand side you can see here this is the audience definition. And at the moment, my estimated reach is 4,500 um, to 5,300 of people that are within those locations, that are within that age range 
who are owners or CEOs of accountancy firms, right? So you can start to go through there. And if you really wanted to, you might be able to narrow further. You might look at what influencers they're interested in, which you could do. So you could say, say you know, a lot of people who are doing B2C might go, well, I'm not really sure about job roles, but they might say, well, actually, um, uh, Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins, I think he's down here as Anthony. Uh, Robbins, I know you're there. Come on. I do it all the time. Maybe it's just Tony. Tony Robbins. Is it one? Robinson? I don't know. Um, let's go. Rich dad, poor dad. Oh, come on. I know. I, I definitely know that these are in here. You just got to find one and then it works. Facebook's really paying. Is it? maybe rich dad is the thing so now we go suggestions yeah here you go perfect it's just strange it's playing up on me bless it but you can see here that all these influences so people that like robert kiyosaki or napoleon hall or like passive income or like brian tracy gary jane vaynerka mm. so all these people that like this will be people that are influencers or who are influenced by that so they could be perfect for you um if you're doing self-development etc so it's not just industry sectors of people it could also be people who are interested in the type of books that uh, might be similar to your product and service right cool okay so let's just take that out because then we just got our accountants so now we've got our audience and that's great so we've got an audience that we're going after um now now we press next so our ad sets group or ad group sorted nice audience about four and a half thousand right um now we want to create the ad so we're going to call this um i also have a tip so you want to get you want to do ABC testing. So you want to be doing different ads. So you start here and go add A, right? And so you might do um, copy of um, or picture of book, you know? Um, so pick of book. Right? So, oh, <laughs> my fingers, because I because my laptop's up high, I'll have to kind of lean across and type. So it's, uh, uh, oh my word. What is going on? Come on. Okay, there you go. So picture of a book. So now we want to create this ad. You see here on the right-hand side, we've got some previews of these different sizes of ads, right? So we would scroll down. You can put your Instagram account in as well. And you want to get down to this ad creative here. And you want to go and remove these ones, which are just pre-kind pre, pre kind of selected ones from your Instagram account. So they just put it in there to fill. And you just remove those. And then you go add media. And you want to go and add an image, right? So if you haven't got any images up there, you would just use this upload button. You'd be able to upload them from your website. Um, or if you've done ads before, it might have different pictures. So here's one of me holding some books. Cool. So I might press that and go, right, That's this is the books I want to do. This is the books I created. And you can see here that they, it comes in different sizes. This is the story size. This is the square size. And then this is the size that kind of sits in the top right-hand corner on the desktop, right? And the beautiful thing about it is you can move these around. So because I'm promoting this book, I might just move that to the right, left. Um, here, that's pretty much okay. So it's all kind of cropped. Um, and then this, I might just move this down a bit um, just so you can kind of see the top of my um, head, right? And so there, therefore, you get the images and it crops it in. If your images don't work like that, then you might need to create a different size. It's kind of these sizes, 9 to 16 or 1 to 1, 9 to 16, 1. And so that's how you can move those around, right? So just nice and simple image for the example. Now we want to put the copy in. So we've got the, the images. Now we want to talk about primary text. You've got three images places. So primary text which is the bit that goes above the image, headline, which is the stuff in gray here, and then description, which is goes underneath when um, you're talking about, you know, what's the next step. Um, and so those are really, really important. Now on that page, remember this page that I said? Here, there's a second download, which is the Facebook lead generation example ad text. And so on here, you can go and click this button and this will take you to a swipe file, uh, which, I think Google's um, the Google Docs kind of done a little bit of funky editing on the on the Word document. Um, so, but in here is a swipe file that tells you all about all this and does different examples and different text examples for you, right? So, if I go and head over to, um, I'll just jump onto this and I'll go right. I want to get some primary text. So, primary text gives you the ability to have a nice long bit of text 
to say, hey, you want to go and download my book? It's awesome. You should go do this. You chuck some emojis in. So you could go onto this document. You can have a little play about with that and, and edit your version of it, right? So you chuck it in there. Bam, you got your primary text in. And I would now probably be sorting out these gaps and all that sort of stuff, right? Um, but you can see here, now I put that one in. You see here, there's a second button that said add option, right? Now, this is super cool. And this is why I love Facebook ads. You click this and it adds a second primary text option up to five. And it will do the same with the headline. It will do the same with the description. So I can simply go back and you can add five different primary text options. Now, why would you do that? Well, Facebook's an algorithm-based um, um, platform, right? So if we are trying to create an ad, you're going to go, right, here's an ad. And I want to go into this or, you know, or I want to go into this audience and I've got that goal, right? But actually, if that ad has times five primary text, times five um, 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 headlines, times five descriptions for one image, that is massive amount of multiples that it's going to be testing. So it's going to test this image with that headline, you know, headline one here, but we're going to try headline three there and a combination of description two there. That's like a hundred odd plus variations of one ad that the algorithm is going to be checking and testing and checking and testing and serving it. And then suddenly we realize that primary text number two with headline one and description two works the best for that image. And then Facebook's ad platform will automatically start spending more and more on that combination because you're getting more and more and more leads, right? So it's that, it's that level of kind of sophistication that just adding this in. So my tip to you is don't over worry about what they're saying. And this is why we don't over worry about the copy. Uh, you know, just put some different variations in. So you'll put some longer ones in, some emojis, so maybe some shorter ones, and you wanna do five primary texts, right? We also wanna do five headlines. So you can see there's some examples of five there. You want to do five headline examples. So the headlines are so, super short. So you can see if I put that in there, um, let me just get rid of the one. There we go. Um, you can see it's now built this primary text with that nice little headline below. And then also you can start to put a little description in like submit the form below and get a free copy of the book and stuff like that, right? So here we go, description. And every time you add one, it gives you that option of being able to then add multiples in there as well, right? Um, so cool, right? So you can start to build out the ad and now you've got this button in here. So you've got the text already sorted, you've got the images sorted. Now we wanna get this button, which could be sign up. But in this one, it could be more like download or learn more, something along those lines. So you might go, um, you know, learn more maybe, you know? So it's just kind of allows people to go, oh, okay, actually this sounds book, that's good. All right, I wanna copy learn more, right? So now we've done that, we go, we've got kind of the ad designed. So the last thing we've got to do is create the form. And you say here, create form, click on this form, and we can call this form, let's just call this a test uh, form, and we want to start to build this form up. So there's two ones, more volume or higher intent. Higher intent basically just means it's like a double opt-in, but go for more volume because you know, we can we can do the uh, the, the intent piece later, right? Um, upload an image. So this is just simple, an image that's going to sit behind your ad. I'm just going to use a random one um, there. So it creates a design behind it. So the room this forms just popped up. Um, and then you want to create a headline. Um, and so that headline is what they're going to hit with. So I've just clicked on the learn more. It's going to pop up and you're now teaching them more. So inside this example, you can see that I've added a few more, um, some examples of how that looks in terms of the design of the form. And so the front page of this form I've got here. So grab a free copy of the best-selling book, Digital Trailblazer. Woohee! right? So bam. So now I've got them that. So I've got a nice headline there. So that backs up and confirms to them that they're going to get a free book when they download this. I'm going to then copy this. And I'm going to put this into the description. And I'm just going to give them a bit more meat on the bone. So secure your company, it's called bestseller, um, which can harness, yeah, help you harness the power of digital. Great, okay? So that's the greeting card. Next, we want to go on to the actual questions we want from them. So you can add questions. So at the moment, it's got email and phone number. And Facebook will auto-populate that. So it's really quick for the user. If you want to, you can add another category in. I like adding in like phone number. 
because we can do some follow-up phone calls and see what they thought about the book, you can kind of do your, your own piece on that, right? Um, then you can do privacy. So privacy is just simply adding the link to your privacy policy. So when you think, well, add link, um, actually just go onto your Facebook or go onto your website, and it just wants to see that you've got a privacy policy. So you, that Facebook's kind of term, so you click on this, copy that, go back over to Facebook, and then go, right, copy link, uh, copy link in there, bam, we've got a privacy policy. And then you can say, you know, MDS priv privacy, right? Um, and then that's it. So this just comes in there. So they know that they're submitting and there's, if they want to check out the privacy stuff. So that's the form. So at the moment, right, we've done the ad, we've got the audience, the form's been done. You will now get a message to say, hey, you've got the lead. Now we want to be clever and do that last piece, which drives them off Facebook into your website to give them the book. And then we can also then start to market them even more. So that's where this last page, this completion page comes into its own because we there's a, there's a trick that works really well. And we just simply say, step one complete. Your book is on its way to your inbox. And you can do because you can be literally sending them an email with it, right? So you can just automatically send them an email every time a lead's generated. Step two on your quest to discover. So this could be, you know, if you want to send to a website, you can. But for us, our step two is to say, hey, join our Facebook community because we know they're going to, we got their email address ready. We're going to send them the book on email. Step two is that we want to get them in our group so then we can carry on networking with them, right? So cool. So step two is this. So you've told them step one, they step two, they're not done, right? And so therefore the call to action button should be uh, visit view website, but the website that you're giving them to view would be your Facebook group. So you just put the URL of the Facebook group in there, whatever it was. Um, and then that means you can then go um, step, you know, step to join group or something like that, right? Do you know what I mean? And they're going to press the button, bam, they're going to join the group. Cool. Once that's done, you press publish, your form is sorted, your ads are sorted. Cool. So there's one last thing I want to show you before I um, kind of conclude the, the demo is once you've got these ads sorted and you've got five variations of the headline, five descriptions, five everything, and one image. You now want to test images. So to set this up really, truly as a proper test, you click these three buttons here, you press quickly duplicate on that ad because it's perfectly set up. You will now have an exact copy of those five headlines, five descriptions, and, and that image here. And you simply want to go out to the top and go and name this ad B, you know, um, and then pick of, you know, pick of, um, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever it is that you're going to be doing. And all you're going to do now is you're just going to scroll down to the image piece, press remove all, go to add media. You see the text hasn't gone. The text is still the same because we want to keep on testing the same five variants of that text. But all we're going to do is we're going to go get another book, another image. And this is an image of, of the book launch. And we're going to go in and we're going to go and um, use this, you know, and we're going to get this. You can see pictures of their book launch. And we go, oh, no, this one didn't work. So you can replace this one and you can go find something that's a little bit more, you know, story, story kind of um, enabled. Obviously, that this wouldn't be relevant for this one. Um, oh, OK. You can pick a different image there, which would be more story size based on it. Right. Job done. And so once that's done, you've now got the same text, but a different image variant. And then you click it again, you duplicate it again, and you can, I recommend to go up to five variants of creative. They could be an image, could be a video, whatever it is, with the same five text. So it's five, 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 five in terms of test. Once that's done, you simply press this green button, publish, poof, your ad then starts to go live. It goes into a quick review stage, which normally takes up to, up to 24 hours um, for Facebook to review, and then it will go live and you'll start getting inquiries. You'll start getting leads. Cool. Okay. <laughs> With one minute to spare, uh, <laughs> the, the, the demo is there. Well, look, gang, I'm sticking around, by the way, for, for five, 10 minutes to answer some further questions. But I really, really, really hope that that has helped um, anybody that is thinking about doing Facebook ads to show it's possible and to see that you can get uh, access to that demo to be able to help. 
if you want to have a conversation with me, an actual lead uh, conversation about your marketing and um, to talk about how you could actually start to scale this and what you should be scaling, I do offer a free strategy session. And that free strategy session is with me one-to-one. We go through your marketing and your business and actually look at how ads could work. We look about how wider stuff could work. And let me just quickly show you that. Um, Simply on my website here, you guys have been given lots of different bits to be able to go onto the website. But you can see here at the top, there's always this free strategy session button. Now, I'm away um in a few weeks for for the half for the eat for easter so there's not many of these slots available so do jump in right so you can see here there's this less um, link there to this free strategy session click book your spot here and you'll see it goes straight into my calendarly which is here you can see that there's only a couple of spaces left here there's probably not that many spaces per version of those so jump in now um, and book into this um, I put the link in the chat for you there now. So that's in the chat. Um, jump onto that and book in with me. It'd be great to talk about your marketing, your strategy in terms of what you're doing to grow your business and if ads are relevant in that. Um, even if you're not sure who your audience are um, or what where you're going to, we can work through that. So do jump into that and look forward to seeing you on a strategy session. Okay, um, into the room, gang. Um, thoughts and uh, any questions? John, yes. Oh, you're a bit quiet, John. Oh, sorry. My headphones, I guess. <laughs> um, what, why wouldn't you use um, uh, lead gen for everybody? Um, lead gen ads? Yeah. Um, so what I recommend lead gen ads um, for most people, there, there's different things that, that is slightly harder on. So, for example, a um, good friend of mine, Dan Priestley, has his score app um thing so he it's like a scorecard type thing um, and so that's got you're driving people off facebook to do the scorecard now it's hard to do a lead ad uh, in front of that to drive people off you could do it um but the software would mean that they would have to put their email details in twice once on the lead ad but then also then the the, the completion step would then drive them to the scorecard and then they have to redo it right so so i think that would be tricky um, to do. So, so the clients that I recommend who are doing that is to not worry about doing a conversion ad on that, to do actually just a traffic ad and just pile traffic at the scorecard and to set up a separate landing page for Facebook ads so you can see what your conversion rate is on it. Um, so it would be those type of scenarios where, where you're sending someone does need them to kind of resubmit their details. Um, and so that becomes, you know, slightly more tricky. Um, so, and of course, if you're selling e-commerce and all that sort of stuff, um, that, that, that would be one of those as well. Um, Steve, yes. Uh, yeah, just a quick one. What kind of conversion rate are you getting off your lead ads? Because when I've used lead ads before, um, whilst people sign up and put their email addresses in, actual conversion towards the back end is much less than conversion ads. Um. So, so in terms of, well, the point of the conversion ads is that you can't actually tell what, what the conversions are unless you're doing separate landing pages, et cetera, for the Facebook ads. So, so how, how would those conversions, so if you've got a, a website page that you're driving people to, if they can find that website page other than the ads, then the conversion tracking is kind of falling, falling down from that. Um, but in terms of conversion rate for lead ads, um, let's have a look and it always depends about the offer etc and the audience you know it's not a hard and fast rule what are you what, what's the conversion that you're asking people to do on your on your ads um it's going through to a, a webinar page to a webinar page okay so the, the point of the traffic ad i guess is that they get loads more information about the webinar on that page right yeah yeah exactly uh so let's have a look at conversions so we, we're we're getting it's more like the cost per conversion um that's uh, is that the one that you're tracking cost per conversion you're tracking something else no i track cpc i'll also track uh conversion rate lead uh, click-through rate ctr yeah so so click-through rate obviously on lead ad is is not something that you would need to um is not is not a thing because you're going to be you you basically pay for reach as opposed to clicks 
on a lead ad. So you're not having to worry about that. I'm just having, just trying to get up my latest ad there. And so we're paying per conversion. Uh, so cost per result, um, three pounds seven per ad. So three pounds seven per ad. So let me just show you that. Um, where's the where's the share? So here we go. So you can see here three pounds seven in blue here for ad. So uh, five hundred forty six on that campaign in terms of conversions and three pounds seven. So we're comfortable with that because we know that our lifetime value and our conversion rate really stacks up across that. Don't get me wrong. You know our LinkedIn leads have a higher conversion rate, but that's a manual process. So we convert, um, we, we're kind of converting about 200 pounds a sale off that. It's about 220 uh, per sale for our Facebook ads. So so that's that's good. It's a lot of leads, um, but the system kind of shakes them out and uh, um, gets them into strategy sessions, et cetera. So, so it's, it's about 220 per conversion, um, 200 pounds, 20. So, it's, so it works for us, it works perfectly. Uh, that's the beauty of the lead ad. You can see here that, you know, the data, sometimes we can get worried about the data. You see if uh, the reach and the impressions here is not, I'm not so worried about reach and impressions. It's all about leads and how many leads that we're getting on that campaign. I'm not so worried about other, other factors. I do worry, this is the thing that people should be looking at about frequency. So where uh, oh, the, this view doesn't show frequency. Frequency is a view that you want to think about so if your frequency is the amount of times your ads get seen and so two or three times per person of that same ad that's okay frequency wise but if that ad is getting seen sort of seven eight times it's like the billboard factor when you're driving down the road you 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 notice a new billboard the first time the second time the third time by the time the fourth fifth time it's gone it's just noise so once an ad gets up to a higher frequency that's when you want to change the creative even if it's was working well in the past, it will then start to fall off a cliff and then stop working. So frequency is the thing that I'd look at. So um, I'd, I'd just be looking at, for webinar campaigns, it, diff, it is difficult for webinars, right? So the ad has to work really hard to sell someone to sign up to a webinar. Whereas a traffic ad for a webinar, similar to what I was saying with a scorecard, you're driving people to a whole landing page that's got lots and lots of information about that webinar, it could actually have a better conversion rate. Um, we find that webinar marketing actually is not as good um, or, or webinars themselves are starting to have a real kind of fall off the cliff moment um, because I think people just have watched so many webinars and been hit with so many webinar marketing campaigns that they don't have the same um, you know, effect that they were working in the past. Um, so I may, maybe switch them to a couple of live live events and that side of things that can work quite well, or, or maybe look at it as like a five day challenge that can work well. They seem to be doing better than webinar marketing, just, just on average. I'm not sure about yours in particular, but on average, that's what we're seeing. Cool. Um, got time for another question before we finish. Uh, Tanya. Hi, Richard. Hey, yeah. So I've got a question regarding the iOS privacy. I would like to know if it doesn't affect the targeting. And also you mentioned about the lookalike audience. Does it also affect the lookalike if you want to create a lookalike from the customer list? Thank you. Um, so with the iOS targeting, because you're giving the data to Facebook, such as email addresses, et cetera, and phone numbers, when you're uploading that custom audience, they will then go and query their database against that. So that's not that's not an issue because Apple aren't anything to do with that. And so it will still be able to find those people and then you can do a lookalike and Facebook already has the data. So it's not an issue. Um, and, and it's actually simpler than you think. You just go into, um, I'll show you quickly. You go into here on the left-hand side and click tools and go to audiences. And once you go into audiences, um, you then start to, um, you, you can, come on, there's a green button there like there is with the ads, which is create audience, which is going to be here, or, or blue button. And once you go into create audience, you go custom audience, and that custom audience is where you click on customer list here, press next, and then it will give you this file template that is an example spreadsheet that it wants to see. 
And essentially it just means that the top columns you need to have. So email, phone, first name, last name, zip, etc. If you don't have these, you just delete them. It's no problem. So you can just have one email, one phone number, right? Um, but then once you've got that, you then upload it. Um, if you've got a customer lifetime value, you can also put that in. So Facebook then will look at the people that you are most working with, the people the highest value, and they'll optimize for those first. So if you don't have that, you just click next, you upload the file, bam, it's done. So you've now got a customer list. And then once you've got a customer list, you can then simply create a lookalike audience by going, hey, find a customer list that you've just uploaded. So say it's this one. Um, and then you say, I want it to be 1% away, i.e. 99% as close as possible to that audience. And then you can just create, and also you can say, I want it to be, you know, I don't know, you, um, I don't know Ecuador, right? And so then you can create audience and it will create the audience around that location for that lookalike. Cool. Yeah, it's thank a great, you. It's a great, it's a great way of working. Right, I've got, um, I got, I'm going to take this last question for Spy and then we're going to go um, and finish. But I hope that's been helpful. Do, if you are jumping off, jump in. And there's been a couple of pings on my phone already. So thank you for those who have booked into that strategy session. Just remember, and I'll stick it back in the chat um, for you guys. Just remember, it's really, really simple to book on. It's just at the top of the website under free strategy session there. You just simply click that. And then that takes you to the Calendly booking, which is there, which I just chuck back in the chat because I know there's been some more bits in there. Bam. I jump on there, take one of those spaces. All right. Um, Sophia. Hi, good morning. That was really um, great. A great show this morning. Just quickly want to find out if I've missed it already. I need to have my lead magnet up on my website in the first instance before doing the Facebook ads. Yes. You, you don't because you can just email them. You can just email them the ebook. Okay. So if so I'm the, using active campaign, I can just have it in my email sequence. Yeah. So, so what can happen is once the lead's created, it can then trigger an autoresponder that sends them an email saying, hey, here's the ebook you asked for. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate no it. All right. Good stuff. Well, look, guys, I hope that helps. Um, and uh, same time next week, some more marketing roundtable action. Um, and uh, if not, I'll see you in strategy sessions. Great to catch you all. And uh, um, see you next Wednesday. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>